Income tax 2023-2024 listed property. What is the business use requirement? Part number two. Get ready and some coffee because we're going to stop the tax man in his tracks with income tax preparation 2023-2024. Okay, maybe we won't stop the tax man in his tracks, but we'll at least slow him down before the train runs over any vital organs. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever, because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our, trust me, I'm an accountant product line. Yeah, it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant because apparently we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep complex and nuanced questions if you would like a commercial free experience consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com most of this information can be found in publication 946 how to depreciate property section 179 deduction special depreciation allowance of makers listed property and more for tax year 2023 which you could find on the IRS website at irs.gov, irs.gov. Remember, in the first half of the income tax formula, basically a funny income statement. Most income statements having income minus expenses resulting in net income. Here, though, having income minus various deductions resulting in taxable income. The sole proprietorship schedule C ultimately rolling into line one income of the formula. Remember, in the schedule C itself, also basically an income statement having business income minus business expenses which can be called business deductions resulting in in essence net business income which is what rolls in from the schedule c to line one income of the formula this formula representing the calculation behind the form 1040 of which this is the first page the schedule c ultimately rolling into line number eight additional income from schedule one this is the schedule one additional income and adjustments to income part number one where the schedule c rolls into line three business income or loss this is the schedule c profit or loss from business having an income statement format income minus expenses we're looking at the expenses which usually has the most different kinds of categories within it some being more difficult than others such as depreciation where as we've seen in prior presentations even if on a cash-based system the tax code might force us to do an accrual thing for example if we purchased equipment for ten thousand dollars we might want to just expense it up front as equipment expense because that would be number one the easy thing to do and number two it would give us the biggest deduction as soon as possible but the tax code might force us to put it on the books as an asset depreciating it over its useful life which is a generally accepted accounting concept however the tax code might then deviate from that generally accepted concept by then allowing upfront depreciation, accelerated depreciation in the form of 179 deduction or special depreciation, allowing us in essence to deduct the entire $10,000 of our example, not as equipment expense, but as depreciation expense leading to the question, why didn't you just let me expense it in the first place on a cash-based system? Answer, of course, being the tax codes trying to go back and forth between normal accounting concepts and then basically the politics and lobbying and whatnot. And the 179 deduction and special are not in alignment with normal accepting concepts. Therefore, you would expect those things to change more likely as time passes and the underlying foundation, which is kind of a maker's depreciation, to remain somewhat constant. We also have certain types of property where the IRS is going to be more skeptical, especially of these accelerated depreciation methods like 179, the uh, special depreciation and the accelerated maker's depreciation versus a straight line method. And that's listed property. That's what we're focusing in on now. The main one for most businesses being an automobile. 
for most small businesses, Schedule C businesses. All right, continuing on with the discussion of listed property, recapture of excess depreciation. So if you, if you used listed property more than 50% in a qualified business use in the year you placed it in service, you must recapture, include in income, excess depreciation in the first year you use it 50% or less. So this is just something to be mindful of when we first put the property on the books. Let's say that we have an automobile. We're gonna put the automobile on the books. Some things that we have to keep in mind. Do we want to be using the actual method or do we want to be using say a mileage uh, type of method? Now you might calculate both methods and determine which method is going to be higher, but you also have to take into consideration the fact that you have this upfront depreciation which could impact the actual method upfront for the first year and you have to usually be somewhat consistent with the methods uh, that we are putting into place now if you were to put say listed property like a car on the books then again you still might qualify for some of these accelerated depreciations 179 special uh, depreciation and the makers but usually you have to have more than 50 percent for business usage and you could see what would happen if the irs is going to be skeptical if someone puts the car on there gets this massive deduction up front when normal accepted accounting principles would say you would have to get the deduction over the useful life and then in the following year after they got that massive deduction they say that the property is no longer used for business and it's like, well, you already got this big, massive expense in the prior year. That's why you might end up having to recapture it. So you want to be careful and make sure that you're clearing, you know, that threshold legitimately in the year you put the thing on the books, or it can cause you kind of issues if there's a reduction in uh, the percentage usage in uh, following years. So you also increase the adjusted basis of your property by the same amount because that's going to be the interplay right so remember that the basis of the property basically like the cost of the property it's the potential energy the potential deduction if you took more of the deduction than the iris thinks is appropriate in the first year and they make you recapture it then you would think that you'd have to report it in income which kind of eliminates the deduction you got in the prior year over the two-year span and then put it back into the unutilized potential deduction, potential energy, the basis, which you would think that you would still get possibly over the life of the property, but using whatever depreciation method is appropriate and with the proper allocation between business and personal use. So excess depreciation is the depreciation allowable for the property, including any section 179 deduction and special depreciation allowance claimed for years before the first year. You do not use the property predominantly for qualified business minus the depreciation that would have been allowable for those years if you had not used the property predominantly qualified business use in the year you placed it in service. So the question would be, if you're in that situation, software would help with the calculation, hopefully. But the idea would, of course, be, well, I have to act. I have to recalculate it as though I'm not being allowed this accelerated depreciation and look at the difference between what I would have been able to deduct and what I had to deduct. And instead of basically going back and amending the prior year tax return, we do what often is done for taxes and say i'm not going to go backwards that's too complex that's too messy we'll figure out the difference and fix it going forwards meaning i'm going to include it possibly in income in the current year to negate the fact that i got the deduction for it in the prior year rather than amending the prior tax return okay so to determine the amount in two above you must refigure the depreciation using the straight line method and ADS recovery period. Example, so on June 2019, uh, Ellen Ray purchased a in place in service a pickup truck that cost $18,000. Ellen used it only for qualified business use for 2019 through 2022. She claimed a section 179 deduction of $10,000. So she got a massive amount of the deduction upfront based on the purchase of the truck. She then began depreciating it using the 200% double declining method over five years a recovery period. That's the normal depreciation for five-year property. The pickup truck's gross value weight 
was over 6,000 pounds, so it was not subject to the passenger automobiles limits discussed. So now we have this issue of, is it going to be subject to the, to the passenger automobiles limitations where we had that 6,000 pound thing going on? Uh, do passenger automobiles limit supply? Okay, so during 2023, she used the, the truck 50% business and 50% per, per personal purposes. She then includes 4,018 excess depreciation in her gross income for 2023. The excess depreciation is determined as follows. So in other words, so during 2000, uh, she used the truck 50% for business. So before it was 100% business, now it's 50% business. And now she was allowed then this excess or accelerated depreciation in the prior year, which now they're going to say we shouldn't have got. So, so the question is, should she go back and amend the prior year? No, we're going to try to fix it basically going forward by recording it in income uh, in the current year. So she so includes 4,018 excess depreciation in her gross income instead of fixing instead of going back and adjusting the deduction in the prior year. All right, how does it work? Total section 179 deduction $10,000 and depreciation claimed 6,618 for 2019 through 2022. So then minus depreciation allowable tables. So now we're we're looking at the tables to calculate the depreciation that should have been calculated without that. And then we can look at the difference between the two. And that's how they're coming out without 4,018. Okay. So if Ellen's use of the truck does not change to 50% for business and 50% per personal purposes until 2025, there will be no excess depreciation. The total depreciation allowable using table 8A through 2025 will be 18,000, which equals the total of the section 179 deduction and depreciation Ellen would will have claimed. So in other words, this whole thing is a is is kind of like a timing difference. Uh, and and so so we have to take that into consideration when we're doing these uh, calculations. But in any case, where to figure and report the recapture? So once we were to figure the recaptured amount, then we have to record it basically in income. That's a weird thing to have, weird type of income. Where does it go? So use form four nine four seven nine seven part four to figure the recapture amount, report the recapture amount as other income on the same form or schedule on which you took the depreciation deduction. So for example, report the recapture amount as other income on schedule C form 1040 if uh, you took the depreciation deduction on schedule C. So it would make sense that it would be on the schedule C one because it's business related. And two, if it was in other income on like schedule one or something like that, then it might not be subject to say social security and Medicare. Whereas you would think because we're trying to, to negate an over deduction in the prior year by including it in income, you got a deduction that was also subject to social security and Medicare in the prior year because it was on the schedule C basically. So you would think that you would have to include it on the schedule C here and the income would be subject not only to income tax, but possibly to social security and Medicare. So if you took the depreciation deduction on form 2106, report the recapture amount as other income on schedule one form 1040 line 8Z. Leases inclusion amount. If you use least, uh, least listed property other than a passenger automobile for business investment use, you must include an amount in your income in the first year. Your qualified business use percent is 50% or less. Your qualified business use percent is the part of the property's total use that is qualified business use defined earlier for the inclusion amount rules for a leased passenger automobile. You can see leasing a car in chapter four of publication 463. The inclusion amount is the sum of the amount A and B uh, described next. However, see the special rules for the inclusion amount later if your lease begins in the last nine months of your tax year or if uh, or is for less than one year. All right, amount A. Amount A is the fair market value FMV of the property multiplied by the business investment use for the first tax year, the qualified business 
percent is 50 percent or less multiplied by the applicable percentage from table a19 in appendix a the fair market value of the property is the value of the first day of the lease term so so obviously leases get a little bit complex as well with the automobiles it's another thing that often can come up with small businesses because the question is did you buy the property did you lease the property if it's a lease is it a capital lease or is it a, an operating lease do you have to include the property as a depreciable item and if it's a depreciable item then you have the same kind of depreciation uh, debates and discussions that are going on here so if the capitalized cost of an item of listed property is, spe is uh, specified in the lease agreement, you must treat the amount as the fair market value. Amount B, amount B is the fair market value of the property multiplied by the average of the business investment used for all tax years. The property was leased uh, that precede the first tax year. The qualified business use percent is 50% or less multiplied by the applicable percent from table A20 in Appendix A. All right, maximum exclusion amount. So the uh, maximum inclusion amount. The inclusion amount can't be more than the sum of the deductible amounts of rent for the tax year in which the leasee must include the amount in gross income. Inclusion amount worksheet. So the following worksheet is produced to help you figure the inclusion amount for least listed property. So here's your worksheet inclusion amount. You got the fair market value, business investment use for first year, multiply them. This is the rate or percent from the table uh, nine or A19, multiply line three by line four. Obviously, hopefully software can help us with these calculations as well. Line six, fair market value, average business investment use for years property leased before the first year business use is 50% or less multiply six by seven the rate from table a 20 multiply line eight by line nine this is the amount uh, this is amount b and then add line five and line 10. so example on February 1st, 2021, Larry House, a calendar year taxpayer leased and placed in service an item of listed property with a fair market value of $3,000. The lease is for a uh, period of five years. Larry does not use the item of listed property at a regular business establishment, so it is listed property. So Larry's business use of the property, uh, all of which is qualified business use, is 80% in 2021, 60% in 2022, and 40% in 2023. So we could see the issue happening here that in 40%, it's gonna be dropping below that 50% threshold. Okay, so Larry must add an inclusion amount to gross income for 2023. The first tax year, Larry's qualified business use percent is 50% or less. The item of listed property has a five-year recovery period under both GDS and ADS. So 2023 is the third tax year of the lease. So the applicable percentage from table A19 is 19.8%. The applicable percent from table A20 is 22%. Larry's deductible rent. Now notice again, software is usually going to be quite good at looking up these table amounts, right? because hopefully they have those tables and the data input can help us with these calculations. Larry's, de uh, Larry's deductible rent for the item of listed property for 2023 is $800. Larry used the inclusion amount worksheet to figure the amount that must be included in income for 2023. Larry's inclusion amount is 224, which is the sum of uh, 238 amount A, and 462 amount b that was a negative 238 okay so inclusion worksheet so the fair market value was 3000 business investment use for the first year uh year business use is 50 percent or less so it dropped under to that 40 percent in that third year i believe it was uh multiply line one by line two there's the 1200 and the rate percent from table a19 here that is multiply line three by line four this is amount a 
fair market value. Once again, uh, the 3000 average business investment use for years property leased before the first year business use is 50% or less. So 70% at that multiply the rate from table 820 multiply line eight by line nine. And so this is amount B. So then we're going to add line five and line uh, 10. This is your inclusion amount enter here and as other income on the form or schedule on which you originally took the deduction. For example, the schedule C, there's the 224. Okay, at least beginning in the last nine months of your tax year. So the inclusion amount is subject to a special rule if all the following apply. The lease terms begin within nine months before the close of your tax year. Uh, you do not use the property predominantly more than 50% for qualified business use during that part of the tax year. So the lease term continues into your next tax year. Under these special rule, add the inclusion amount to income in uh, the next tax year. Figure the inclusion amount by taking into account the average of the business investment use for both tax years, line two of the inclusion worksheet and the applicable percent. So again, we're getting a little bit technical on the details. I'm not going to go into that one in detail. So lease for less than one year. So a special rule for inclusion amount applies if the lease term is less than one year and you do not uh, you do not use the property predominantly more than 50% for qualified business use. The amount included in income is the inclusion amount figured as as described in the preceding discussion multiplied by a fraction. The numerator of the fraction is the number of days in the lease term and the denominator is 365, the days in the year or 366 in a leap year. So the lease term for listed property includes options to renew if you have two or more successive leases that are part of the same transaction or a series of related transactions for the same or substantially similar property, treat them as one lease. So I'm not gonna go through the example on that one. That's somewhat of a specialized area. Where to report the inclusion amount? Report the inclusion amount figured as described in the preceding discussion as other income on the same form or schedule on which you took the deduction for the rental costs. So you would think that would probably be the Schedule C for the same reason that we looked at before because we're adjusting for an excess expense in the prior year by not amending the prior year but including it in income in the current year. And because the deduction was subject not only to income tax but also a benefit for Social Security because it was on the Schedule C, you would think you would have a similar situation on the income and have to be on the Schedule C and that would be bad, right? causing more taxes, not just for federal income taxes, but possibly Social Security and Medicare self-employment tax. So for example, report the inclusion amount as other income on Schedule C, Form 1040, if you took the deduction on Schedule C, if you took the deduction for rental costs on Form 2106, report the inclusion amount as other income on uh, Schedule 1, Form 1040, Line 8Z.